Yaman, we are here at the Ganter residence with my son TJ, who I just overcame uh, an injury. We're going to talk about that. And uh, local celebrity yoga guru, Miss Brittany Coates, how are you? Good, how are you? From Funky Mudra. We just did an edition <laughs> on her. Um, I've been reading this book, Breathe, and it's been fascinating. Um, here's the book. I'm not going to lie to you. I still don't know how to read. Thank God for audiobooks. I wish they would have been around during SATs. I would have done a lot better in the reading part. But um, I'm just fascinated. It talks about in there breathing in and out through your nose, the benefits of it, not getting the bacteria in, monitoring and balancing your oxygen and CO levels. Lots of great stuff. They talked about how monks can melt circles in the snow around them by, with proper breathing, how um, women have rested cancer and people have cured E. coli. And this has really been life changing. Now, it is impossible for me to breathe in and out of my nose when I'm working out and jogging and doing things. But I, it was just very intriguing. I started to look back in my days of running cross country and how I used to exert so much energy and breathe so heavy and would get sick at the end of my cross country meets. And it, it just kind of reflected on the, the power of breathing. And I'm trying now. So there are a lot more times throughout the day that I am breathing better. I notice, I've heard that when your tongue is at the top of your mouth is usually when it's resting and it's sending electronic pings throughout your entire body that are making the magic happen. So that's weird, it is. When my mouth is shut, when I stop talking, my tongue is up there. And I'm trying to breathe slowly in through my nose, taking less bacteria, helping my immune system, and breathe out even slower through my nose. And I'm not doing this all day, every day, but I am doing it a lot more and I am noticing benefits. So we wanna kinda tie this in. Our goal today is um, we're gonna lead into a little great way to start your day with some stretching and breathing. And that, that was my goal and that's why I reached out to Brittany um, through stretching, so I was like, wow, you know, I've really been hooked on yoga lately and I get that euphoric feeling when I leave and it calms me down and I can literally sit peacefully in a parking lot for 15 minutes after an hour yoga class, which is not like me. Those of you who know me, fast paced, always on the go, always on the move and uh, I'm learning these tools to be present in yoga, to um, breathe properly and to listen to what's going on so I can do it. So let's talk about, it brings up in the book that breathing is only half the battle, that stretching, you need the proper stretching to capacitate your lungs and respiratory system to get those deep breaths that we're looking for. Let's talk about stretching a little bit, Brittany. Yeah, so I think what's really important is how many different things you can utilize the breath for, in particular really partnering with stretching or yoga and finding this kind of pattern of breath and movement. I think starting with just being able to move your body and have this mobility, especially as an adult, you grow into these prolonged periods of sitting or um, driving. driving, you're hunched over a desk typing, you're not maybe quite as active as you used to be. And so over time, this kind of makes your body more stiff and kind of will create these muscle imbalances. And so you don't really know that these muscle imbalances exist until they become a huge problem and then you have to have a surgery or you know something like physical that. therapy or fighting an injury yeah. that's bigger than it could have been yeah but I think too in terms of just building endurance from an athletic perspective there's just a lot of advantages to understanding how to move with your breath so that it works with you and not necessarily against you where you're kind of gassing out especially doing high interval training um, and also I think it just really teaches you how to stay present during your workouts. You know, if you're patterning, if you're a runner, you know, patterning your movement, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And you're just really focused on the quality of your breath, not maybe just the length, but the quality, being able to take a deep, full inhale and a deep, full exhale. Really making sure that the oxygen delivery to the muscles is efficient is really important to help prevent injury, but, and also stay present. Where you don't want to take these quick gasping breaths in quick and out quick, because they're not full. What happens when that's going on? Yeah, I mean, I think it just depends what you're doing. In terms of yoga, the whole point of yoga, more or less, is more about restraint and kind of letting go of your ego, right? Because every day we're in this world where it's go, 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 and there's a competitive nature, and we gotta get a lot done in a short amount of time. And so we lose sight and focus of this present moment, always constantly thinking about the future, right? So we've now trained our brain to just always be thinking in this nature. And so being able to kind of like scale and dial back and train yourself to actually slow down, take your time and understand how you are, if not in the poses or during the stretch, how you emotionally respond, how you physically respond. Are you putting yourself just into a deep, you know, back bend and you're just instantly, your body is like, ah, get me out. You know, that's not really what yoga is, right? 
But in order to be and get genuine flexibility, you have to be in the pose for a certain amount of time for it to really take hold and let your you know, muscle spindles and your deep GTOs kind of just soften so your breath and your body don't alert your senses. That's powerful because you know in recovery I learned to be present and use the tools that are offered and made for me and now in yoga it's really kind of goes hand in hand with the tools I've learned in recovery and I'm able to be present. And I had a really hard time learning to meditate and I was kind of turned off by it and, or intimidated. Yeah. It was uncomfortable for me and I would sit here in this, in this seat and listen to guided yoga meditations outside and I heard something one day because every time that I'm meditating my mind's flying off somewhere and then the, my guided meditation would be like, okay, you're probably not with me anymore, but that's okay. Embrace where you're at, leave it, and come back to where you are, and let's get present. And don't be so hard on yourself that your brain's going all over the place. Yeah. And lately, since I've been doing yoga, like I said, I left without a forward feeling because I'm in there and I'm present now, and I'm getting better. I can tell I'm getting more flexible. I can tell my breathing patterns are getting better. My stretches are getting deeper, and I'm able to hold them longer. So it's working. And that being present, and now I found my own form of meditation in yoga that I'm just... Being present is simply meditation for me. Yeah. And I hear it can be different for everybody, but that's what works for me, that I can leave a thought where it's at and come back to just not having a thought and be still. Yeah. And yoga does that for me. Yeah, and I think you make a great point because I don't think there is a one-size-fits-all for meditation. Yoga, in a sense, vinyasa, is moving meditation. So you're moving inhales and exhales. You're not just sitting still like if you were to Google meditation, this kind of guy sitting on a rock, right, with his you know, in his mudra, right? Yeah, mudra, um, that's right. Yeah. I mean, that is a form of meditation, but it may not be kind of circa America 2021, right? So mm -hmm. you want to be realistic about these daily habits you're creating, right? And, and how you're executing to get to this end goal. So it's just taking those little steps and understanding and kind of letting go of the idea of what you think something might be and letting it actually be something else. So that's what we're going to get into. We're going to kind of go through a little routine that you can start your day with no matter how old you are, what you look like, or where you're at. You could be in a hotel in Africa or staying in Chi-Town, Chicago, getting ready to eat a big breakfast. Before you do that, we want to get up and start the day the right way with a little bit of proper stretching to get your body ready for the day and some good breathing techniques. And um, before we get into that, uh, TJ is not just here to be sitting between us, but um, he just went off to IMG camp and uh, day one experienced an injury and I kind of wanted to elaborate on that. I was so proud of him for making it through the camp and staying there an entire week and he learned more than I know today about the body. He dug into his injury to find out what was wrong with him, why did it happen, and what he can do to prevent it. Then he stayed there and started reading a TB12 book on Tom Brady. Thank you Tom Brady if you're listening or watching us, we appreciate you. But um, And he's like, Dad, did you know Tom Brady uses bands and doesn't hit weights and you know, why, why is he lasting so much longer than other people and he's almost 50 in an NFL stud where people half his age are getting hurt and not making it, you know, not going a distance. So TJ, tell us about what muscle you hurt and why it happened and how are you going to prevent that? I pretty much just hurt my calf by running. And, and there's a muscle in there that I don't even know how to pronounce. What was that? Soleus. The soleus muscle. And then it started hurting because I wasn't stretching at all, like a couple weeks straight. And one day I just overused it and it like kind of popped and like cramped. And now if I just start stretching again, I think it'll be better. So you spent the whole week out there with trainers learning about your injury. I know you're on the phone with Santiso. Thank you, Aaron, for helping us out. Learning to do different things on the roller. Learning the importance of, you know, stretching. This experience of missing camp for a week could be a life-changing experience for him when he gets into high school and he's stretching that he doesn't get hurt and that injury takes him out for an entire season. And if you're an athlete and you know what that's like to sit on the bench when you're a stud athlete and watch somebody take your position, it turned me into drugs actually. I remember that in high school. That, that's where I, I kind of went out and started hanging around with the wrong crowd. It was all kind of from an injury. It took me off the field and into other things. So it's kind of ironic how this is happening at a young age. I'm proud of you for you know, researching into your injury, finding out what you need to do to get better, but more so down the road to prevent it. So you feel like you're equipped with some skill sets to carry on through high school football? Yeah, probably. Probably, and now we all know what a soleus is. It's this part of the calf in here, I think, that meaty part, you can see a jiggle there. All right. <laughs> well, if you like what you see, tune into our video. We'll send out a link for it. The great way to start your day with some good stretching, and some proper breathing techniques. And uh, make sure you visit Miss Brittany at Funky Mudra. And uh, credit to Aaron Santiso, the best PT in South Florida. The magic happens there. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the EDBL Life. We appreciate you. Get out there and support some locals. Breathe and do yoga. Most of all, be present and kind. Yeah, man.